everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna. Today I'm going to be giving you some classic horror movie recommendations. I have 15 of these and I also just filmed 15 modern horror movie recommendations which will be going up at the same time as this. So if you want to watch that video first or after this, you are more than welcome to because they will be up at the same time. <laughs> So while I listed those chronologically from newest to oldest, I'm going to be doing the opposite for this. I'm going to be going from oldest to newest. And these are from 1999 all the way back to the 1940s. So hopefully you find something from this list that will satisfy your classic horror movie craving. So we're going to start with the picture of Dorian Gray. <clears throat> this is from 1945. It's the black and white version. I hated the newest version of the film. It was just bad. <laughs> this has a runtime of an hour and 50 minutes. As far as I know, it's not rated. It's too old to have had an MPAA rating, and I couldn't find anything to suggest that it was properly rated. Uh, it stars Herd Hatfield, George Sanders, Angela Lansbury, and Donna Reed. And of course, it's about Dorian Gray, who's a young man who's just obsessed with like beauty and he just has like these base desires that twist him into a horrible person. He has a portrait that's painted of him and while he's allowed to carry on these horrific acts, the portrait ages in his place and he does not age. But that will all change if he looks upon the portrait's face and all the years will come back to him. It's a very classic story. It was written in the 1800s by Oscar Wilde. And this was the first adaptation of it, I believe, and it's still the best one. Although there was like a, a decent version of it in Penny, Penny Dreadful, but it's still not perfect. It's one of my favorite books though. <laughs> I love that book. Psycho, 1960, an hour and 49 minutes, and it's rated R. Of course, this was directed by Hitchcock, starring Anthony Perkins, Janet Lee, Vera Miles, and John Gavin. After stealing a large sum of money, Marion, who's Janet Lee, goes on the run and winds up at a small family-run motel, run by Norman Bates and his mother. And again, a lot of people don't know this, but this was actually based on a novel, and the novel is very good, too. I recommend it. Night of the Living Dead. This is from 1968. Of course, has been remade probably more than once. <laughs> this is a runtime of an hour and 36 minutes. It is rated R. It is actually still pretty violent, even though it is black and white. Directed by the great George A. Romero, who is sadly no longer with us. It stars Dwayne Jones, Judith O'Day, Carl Hardman, and Marilyn Eastman. It's about siblings Barbara and Johnny. Uh, do you remember that classic line, They're coming to get you, Barbara! That's from this. <laughs> they go to visit their father's grave, and that's when the zombies arrive. And Barbara is able to get away and find safety at an abandoned house. She is later joined by Ben, who's played by Dwayne Jones, and he seems to have a really good handle on the situation, able to help her, as well as the others who come upon the house later on in the film. I really enjoy this movie because they actually, they actually put a person of color in a pivotal role that did not demean him or disrespect him in any way. He was the hero of the film. <laughs> and that was, you know, still not typical at that time. Um, but Dwayne Jones did an excellent job in this film. And yeah, it was nice to see that. Very refreshing to see that. Carrie from 1976. Again, miles above the remake. <laughs> This is an hour and 38 minutes. It, it, You know what? It's actually rated PG in some places, but no, really, it's rated R. <laughs> this stars Sissy Spacek, Piper Laurie, Amy Irving, and John Travolta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, of course, about a girl named Carrie, played by Sissy Spacek, who's lived 
a very sheltered existence and she's bullied by both her classmates at school as well as her mother, heavily religious mother, at home. Little does anybody know that Carrie has the power of telekinesis and if she gets a little too angry, the consequences could be dire. Halloween, 1978. An hour and 31 minutes runtime and rated R. Uh, some of the sequels are not that bad either. I just decided to stick with the originals for this list just for, you know, the sake of exposing you to the first movie if for some reason you haven't seen any of these before. I imagine most of you have. Most, if not all of you have. <laughs> Uh, this stars Jamie Lee Curtis, Nancy Keys, PJ Souls, and Donald Pleasance. On Halloween in 1963, Michael Myers stabbed his younger sister to death. And then 15 years later, he returns to the town where he grew up and starts killing people again. Of course, this is just your traditional slasher film, but it was... You know, one of the first Halloween-based slasher films, which really kicked off a genre. And it's still popular to this day because they are coming out with another Halloween movie. <laughs> Alien, 1979. This is an hour and 56 minutes and rated R. Starring Sigourney Weaver, Ian Holm, John Hurt, and Harry Dean Stanton. This is about a crew aboard a space vessel who receives a signal that they perceive to be a distress signal and they decide to go and check it out. What they find instead is a threat that could just wipe them out entirely. This is another movie that spawned several sequels and spin-offs <laughs> and prequels. And let me tell you, I've only watched one of the prequels, but it was so bad I'm might actually be one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> the next movie, oddly enough, not well loved by a lot of people, The Amityville Horror, 1979. One hour and 57 minutes, and it's rated R. It stars James Brolin, son Josh Brolin, very famous as well. Margot Kidder and Rod Steiger, or Steiger, I think it's Steiger. Uh, this is about a family who moves into a new home, only to find that it doesn't want them there. So things start happening, like the walls start to bleed, and a malevolent presence even possesses the father who lives there, and eventually the kids as well. And yeah, this wasn't as well received as a lot of other horror movies around that time, like The Omen and The Exorcist. I'm not entirely sure why, but I still like it, and I actually enjoy the Ryan Reynolds version too, even though it's a very different movie. It's obviously a lot more to do with demons and jump scares, um, but I think both versions are pretty good, and I would still recommend them, both of them. I don't recommend reboots or remakes very often, but I think that it has a place. And again, <laughs> not a lot of people would agree with me on that. Next up we have The Changeling from 1980, not to be confused with the Clint Eastwood directed Angelo Angelina Jolie starring film from recent years. This is much older. <laughs> it's an hour and 47 minutes and it's rated PG-13. And stars George C. Scott, Trish Vandeveer, Melvin Douglas, and Jean Marsh. So after an accident kills his wife and daughter, a man named John, George C. Scott, stays at a secluded mansion in order to work on his musical composition. He is not alone in the house. There's a spirit of a young child there who's trying to send him a message. And much like other poltergeist related films of that time it's not a lot to do with jump scares but to do with atmosphere and the atmosphere in this movie is excellent it is quite creepy and i really like it friday the 13th again this one's kind of like amityville in that it actually wasn't as well received as something like halloween 
this is an hour and 35 minutes and it's rated R, starring Betsy Palmer, Adrian King, Janine Taylor, and Footloose himself, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> My brother would kill me if I didn't call him Footloose. <laughs> So a young boy named Jason Voorhees died at Camp Crystal Lake. He drowned there many years ago and then followed that up several years later. It's opened, it's reopened to the public and the camp counselors get picked off one by one. Hmm. <laughs> I'm actually not sure which has more sequels, this or Halloween, because they both have a lot of sequels and if you ever get a chance to, watch Jason X because it is one of the funniest horror movies I have ever seen. <laughs> Videodrome from 1983. This is an hour 27 minutes. Rated R. Rated R. <laughs> this is directed by a Canadian, actually. This is a David Cronenberg film starring James Woods, Debbie, Debbie Harry, Peter Dvorsky, and Sonia Smits. This is about a man named Max, played by James Woods. He's the president of a television channel, and he's not shy about airing X-rated content on his channel. When he discovers a new show called Videodrome, he will do anything to acquire it for his station, but the show is not what he thinks it is. This movie is very strange. It contains a lot of body horror, and social commentary and it's just overall very bizarre and probably not what a lot of people want to watch but it's it's honestly like very interesting David Cronenberg movies are usually very weird but I don't know I would say it's worth it because it is a good commentary on society Silence of the Lambs 1991 this is 1 hour and 58 minutes, and it's rated R, starring Anthony Hopkins, Jodie Foster, Ted, Ted Levine, and Scott Glenn. This is about FBI trainee Clarice Sterling, played by Jodie Foster, who very begrudgingly must accept the help of convicted serial killer and cannibal Hannibal Lecter in order to solve a string of new murders uh, carried out by a guy who skins his victims. Once again... Some people don't consider it a horror movie, they consider it a suspense or thriller, which is horror, in my opinion. It's all the same. <laughs> Next we have the Japanese version of The Ring. This is just called Ring or Ringu. Um, 1998, 1 hour and 36 minutes, rated R. Starring Nanako Matsushima, Miki Nakatani, and Yuko Takuchi. And this is about reporter Reiko, who looks into the rumor of a cursed videotape after her cousin dies under very mysterious circumstances. After she views the tape, strange and disturbing things start to happen. It has the same plot as the one with Naomi Watts. Um, the thing is, it's just a lot scarier. <laughs> um, I never found the ring to be very scary. Asian horror movie in general, to me, is incredibly frightening. Uh, it's a lot to do with the atmosphere of it, with the way that the actors, a lot of them know contortionism uh, in these specific movies, like The Grudge, for example, again, contortionism is involved. So it's just really creepy the way that they move. And yeah a lot more scary <laughs> and they rely a lot less on special effects to scare you another Japanese movie is audition from 1999 it's an hour and 55 minutes rated R directed by a very controversial director Takashi Miike uh, he's just known for being excessively violent <laughs> and some people just don't like that but starring Ryo Ishibashi, Aihi Shina, and Tetsu Sawaki this is about a lonely widower played by Ryo Ishibashi, and he starts taking auditions at his home to find a new wife. One of the women, played by Aihi Shina, turns out to be a sadistic torturer of men. 
and it is disturbing and it is violent. <laughs> the last movie is Sleepy Hollow from 1999. It's an hour and 45 minutes and it's rated R. This is of course a Tim Burton movie. I feel like a lot of people refer to Beetlejuice when it comes to Halloween movies by him and Sleepy Hollow kind of gets left in the dust. So this stars Johnny Depp, Christina Ricci, Michael Gambon, and Christopher Walken. This is about Ichabod Crane, played by Johnny Depp, who is sent to Sleepy Hollow in order to investigate a series of serial murders. After talking to some of the locals, he finds out the tale of the Hessian Horseman, also known as the Headless Horseman, who is in constant search to find a new head. So those are all of the movies I have for you today. Again, check out the other list if you want movies post-2000. <laughs> I have some for you there. And I hope you enjoyed this list. Please leave some suggestions down below. Obviously, this is not a complete list. There are so many more movies out there. Anyway, I post Mondays and Fridays here on this channel in the afternoons Eastern Time, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye, guys!